G'day everyone and welcome back to another damn video. I haven't put one up for a while. This here is some footage from winter last year when the dam got close to filling up. The drain didn't quite flow in properly so yeah it didn't fully fill up. Hopefully this year it will and once that drain starts flowing it doesn't take long at all. It gets that nice dark tannin water and yeah it looks really good. So if you missed the first build this here was where we pumped out some water and got it prepared to be dug out. Then once it got dug out, we had to wait for the water to come and fill it up. The whole goal here was to be able to put fish in it and then eventually just start going fishing in the dam. We got a rock barrier put into the drain and this here is where the drain flows in through the rock barrier and into the dam. Once the drain starts flowing, it doesn't take long at all for the dam to fill up. And right there, how good does that look? Dark tannin water mixing with that clay water and then flushing the dam out clean. From here, I put in some aerators, tried to keep all the fish happy, and then I managed to stock some good sized silver perch in there. Yep. Oh, that one's better. They hit really hard. And I've also put some trout in as well. So in this video, you'll also see me putting in some more trout. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy this video. That was a nice one. How good is that? Nice silver perch from the dam. Nice bag of brown trout. Sit that in there as well. I've got 25 rainbows and 25 browns. So I've got some fish here. Little rainbows. That I'm going to put in now. Oh, in yeah, that's right. I'm pouring them in now. So these trout that I put in a couple years ago, they don't breed in here because it's not the right conditions, which. Yeah, so I'll just have to keep restocking them. So that's why I've waited two years and I've just done another restock of some yearlings. So they'll probably be roughly the size of my palm. So yeah, yay big. And hopefully the other ones are getting bigger. I haven't caught them all through summer because I don't want to disturb them because yeah, this water level is quite low. So yeah, I'll just wait and see. Once this water level starts rising, then I can probably do a few more casts and start seeing how they're going. But yeah, for now I'm just gonna release these fish and hopefully they survive pretty well. We just need some more rain. G'day everyone, I'm at the dam today. So we got this lot of dead grass here that I'm gonna try burn. It's been raining for the last week, bits and pieces, and then we get a heap of rain coming in probably uh, a week's time. So yeah, if I don't burn it now, we're sort of never gonna get a chance until it's gonna be too late. And then yeah, it's gonna be the end of the season and it's gonna be a big fire hazard. So I'm gonna try burn all this dead grass now. We've got this flamethrower thing that borrowing off my dad so yeah there's a lot of leaf litter here which I don't know if will burn too well yeah sort of end of the season anyway so I'm sort of pushing it to be able to burn it so all these reeds these will burn very well then we've got a lot of dead grass here a bit of green grass here which will sort of stop it from spreading so hopefully it'll burn all right but we'll try see how we go let's get this cranking got the gas here just going to turn it on Boom, just like that. I'm gonna stand on the other side. I'm just gonna leave it like that for a bit.
this is the automatic fish feeder. It's just a cheap one I brought off eBay. So you just turn the switch on and off to turn it on. And if you have it on, it will just run through your um, automatic cycles. So you can set up to four cycles per day and you can choose each cycle. You can choose it to go for up to one minute. So if I had it set for say five seconds, which I find is plenty, um, when it turns on, it will just go like this. And then it will just count up to five seconds spraying food. So yeah, it's actually quite good for the price. It's a waterproof one. I've got some batteries underneath. So yeah, I'll just have to keep running through them but it's been out here for about a year now and been out in the weather, it's been all good. The ants have taken over, which is kind of annoying at the moment, but it's not really in use, so it's all good. So I will put some of these in as a sort of pretend run. I don't know how it'll go. A bit more food in there for the weight, but so it actually goes all right. Um, yeah, like I thought oh, they wouldn't feed out too well, but I come back and then it's all always lower than what it is. And if, if not, you just come back, stir it up a bit, and then all the food starts falling back down. So it's actually pretty good for the price. Uh, I think it's like $100 on eBay, so 100 Australian dollars. There's your feed cycles. There's your times. And then you fill this full of food which actually works pretty good. There's a, a little tab here, which you can pull out for different sizes, different size foods. So I'll just put it on manual as if it is simulating the fish feeders on. So, so it just sprays it all out there, which is actually pretty good. But at the moment, the water level is way too far away. So all this food is just gonna sit on the edge and be a waste. So got a big tree behind me here, which has just fallen over. So I'm gonna get a few branches for the dam. It's a perfect tree. You just, if you get snagged, you should be able to snap off the branches in the dam. So I'm just gonna cut down this parts of this tree because yeah, it's fallen down. So throughout summer, it's probably gonna die anyway. So I'll just give it a little trim up and take it to the dam. Nice one. Nice and bushy. There's one branch there. So with this, if you get snagged, you just be able to, you know, should be able to just snap it off. But it might not, it's better than nothing. These aren't very thick logs, so should be able to get it out. And I'll just tie them down with some bricks and some wire. So if you get caught in the wire, you'll be able to just flick them off. So yeah, we'll see if we can get some more logs. Throw that one on as well. Won't hurt. And that'll do us. Might throw that one on this side.
got the trees behind me and then I've just got these bricks and some wire which I'm just gonna tie them down so they don't float up later on when it starts filling up. So yeah, I'm just gonna tie it up, wrap it around and then put it in the dam. Got this all tied up behind me. I'm just gonna throw that in. Probably as the water level rises, I want it just to be out so you can still see where it is. So I might put it in just a little bit further just so the leaves are in the water at the moment and then it should be perfect. So as the water rises, then it will still be sort of just out of the water. Got it in there just there. A lot of structure. Got another big clump that we've put in earlier, sort of in the middle down there somewhere. And now we've got this one. So yeah, the water probably will come up where that grass line is. So then yeah, we'll probably just will be will be underwater, but yeah, at least we can sort of tell for most of the year where it is. We've had some well needed storms come through and this is one of them. I put my camera outside to get some footage of the lightning storm. So just a warning for the next footage as there's some flashing lights, but this is pretty awesome. Came through thick and fast and then brought in some well needed rain. Some of these must have been right over the top of the house because it turned the night into day. As you can see in these two photos, is basically just lit up the whole paddock. And hopefully in the next video we have the drain flowing in. Thanks for watching. Cheers.